Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of The Pursuit. I'm your host, Ben Spangle. So excited to be with you today. Today is a special day. This is one of my favorite subjects. It's something that's been a passion of mine, something that's made a dramatic difference in my own life over the the last decade and a bit, 13 years or so. And that's really learning the art and science of goal setting and goal achieving. And so today we're going to be spending a whole bunch of time Focus purely on helping you set effective goals for the new year. And depend, depending when you're listening to this, at the time of this recording, it's December 2020. It's been a wild year in so many ways. And we're going to talk a bit about that and reflecting on the year. But it really doesn't matter when you're listening to this. The strategies, the ideas, and the philosophies, that these apply to any point in your life when you want to go and set some goals. So we are going to take a bit of a, a, a process, though, of some things I like to do at the end of my year. So whether you're listening to this now in 2020 at the time of this recording, or you're listening in 2021 or 2030, I mean, it really doesn't matter. The principles stay the same. And so what I'd like to share with you is what's worked for me. I know there's lots of different ideas on goal setting. I know there's lots of different great speakers and authors and trainers and teachers, and you may even have your own methods that work well for you. I want to share with you what's worked great in my life and our life. And to me, what that is, the first point of that is really beginning with a review process of the past year. So I think so often we just kind of sometimes we we don't even take stock of what's happening. And John Maxwell has he talks a lot about this idea of experience. Experience alone is not a great teacher. People say experience is a great teacher. Well, experience by itself isn't. Evaluated experience is a great teacher because if I can take the lessons, if I can draw the lessons out of that and through that and from that, well, now I've got a great teacher. So some questions that I like to do, and I like to write these down in my journal, in my notebook and really reflect on, I'd encourage you to do the same. The first question we begin this review process are what are the five best things that happened this year? And you could have had a really crap year. It could have been an awful year for you, but I promise you there was good in there. And if you'll look for the good, you'll find it. And so often what we do is we focus on all the things we didn't accomplish or what we didn't make happen instead of what were the great things? What were the great five happenings of this year? And we start to list those down. And if we can begin the process of reviewing what went well, what, you know, maybe, maybe things you accomplished or maybe your business changed in a way, you know, as, as at the time of this recording, our business changed to so much of a virtual platform. I mean, that was an amazing happening for us where it increased the amount of time with my family and everything is unbelievable. So it could be that, you know, um, it could be that maybe, maybe this year was an awesome year and you doubled your income this year. I mean, that might be an awesome thing. Maybe your marriage got better than it's ever been. You got your health and fitness better than it's ever been. You started meditating every day and perhaps that's it for you. Or, or maybe this is the year that you really dove into your personal development. I mean, that could be a great thing too. But what were the five best things that happened to you this year? And don't stop until you get five. Make sure you jot down the five. The next question that I always like to review and take a look at is, is what are the five biggest lessons I learned this year? So often we can go through it without reflecting on what did I learn. But again, it's that whole idea of evaluated experiences. If I can stop to take stock of what did I learn? How did I grow from this? How did I gain from this? I mean, man, you'd be amazed at what will start to happen when we start to tap into our own minds and our own, I guess if we could call it our own growth in a way of really reflection, that would be a better term, reflection of what did I learn? Because I know you learned some powerful lessons this year and you do too. Whether you've stopped to take stock of them or not, that I don't know, but I know you learned some great lessons. And if we stop to do that and we really acknowledge what did I learn, we become a better version of ourselves because in order for us to go to new levels, we've got to grow to new levels. And part of growth is pausing and reflecting and taking that inventory of really what did I learn? And there were some great lessons. I know I had some great ones as I went through this process for myself. You know, the next question I think is a great one too. And this might be similar. There could be some overlap in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of the five best things that happened. That question though was what positive changes did you make this year? What positive changes did I make? And you know, there could have been some, there might be, there might be multiple ones, some habits you started, or maybe you joined a new business or you finally started working on the book that you wanted to, or you just started a new workout program, or um, you, you worked on treating your spouse better, or you're, you're working on being a more patient parent, or I don't know, right? In your business, I mean, you started developing the habit of making more calls. I mean, whatever it might be. Maybe you weren't a reader at all and you started reading or you, you're just getting into podcasts. I mean, that could be a positive change for you as well. Exercising, you name it. I mean, these are all great things, all great things. 
that are positive change that we want to focus on. Now, here's a question that I think is a good one too, is to stop and pause. And, and before I ask you the question, this question is not about getting into a beating yourself up party, feeling bad about yourself. It's nothing like that, but it's just to reflect on what do I wish I would have done better? You know, where, where could I really have improved? What do I wish I would have done better this year? What a great question to really think about that. And maybe it was, maybe, you know, I wish I would have taken my workouts more seriously. I wish I would have been more focused in my, maybe you're in sales and you wanted to work on your presentation. That could be it, or it could be a business, whatever it might be. Or I wish I would have worked on my personal development more. Or you know what? I didn't spend as much time as I could have on my marriage. Doesn't matter. It's not, a, it's not about judgment. It's not about good or bad. It's not about feeling bad. It's just about, it's about being neutral in it and taking a look objective of what do I wish I would have done better. And then the last question that I'd like to reflect on as I'm reviewing my year is what changes do I want to make in the upcoming year? And this is a fun list to start to think about the habits that you want to install, the things you want to maybe stop doing, the things you want to start doing. These are also good questions to ask too. What do I need to start? What do I need to stop? Great things to reflect on. But this review process is a worthy process of you to really take the time and start to think about all these ideas and how do I want to change? How do I want to grow? What were the blessings of this year? What were the good things in this year? What did I learn from this year? What changes did I make? What do I wish I would have done better? And what changes do I want to make for the coming year? So that's the beginning process to me. When I take time to sit down and start planning my next year, I don't begin until I've reviewed th this year. The next point I want to talk to you about is really this idea of the power of purpose or the power of your why. Yeah, there's a great book by Simon Sinek called Start With Your Why or Start With Why, part of me. And that's a great title to it. And I think that that's so true is that when we really start to think about our goals and what we want to create in our lives, we've got to begin with why. We've got to begin with strong reasons. Tony Robbins always says reasons come first and then results next. Results come second. So reasons first, results second. So what are your reasons behind this? And, and there's lots of different ways you could do this. I have a mentor of mine that, that teaches all the time and it's a phenomenal process. I've done it many, many times. And that is what are the top 10 reasons why you're committed to whatever you're committed to. It could be the business you're in. It could be just the life that you want to create, but what are the top 10 reasons? The first three or four usually come pretty easily. And then you got to start digging deeper in terms of that. So that could be, that could be an example of a way that you would do that. But I really feel like the magic or part of the part of the magic anyways, is just this idea is when you have purpose behind what you're doing, man, does it ever become easier to do what you need to do? And often we will set goals, especially if you're, if you're not new to this, so this is something you do regularly, we'll set goals, we'll get excited. If we're excited for two weeks or three weeks or maybe even a month or two, and then we kind of drift off and lo lose that oomph behind it. And the reason why is a lot of times we set goals that truly didn't actually have purpose behind them. We didn't stop to take the time to think, why do I want that? And so the reason why you want what you want is the driving force. It's not necessarily the thing. It's not the money you want necessarily or the car or the promotion or whatever. It's, it's why do you want that? Well, why do you want the money? What does that mean to you? Why do you want that car? What, do you, what does that mean to you? And the greater the purpose or the greater the why, the greater the effort we're going to put forth in achieving it. So if I'm very clear on exactly why I want what I want, why I do what I do, you know, the things that I step into for that. Well, I'm far more likely to take the steps that I need to, to go and create the life, to do the steps, to do the things I maybe don't want to do, but I know are in alignment with what I really do want. So your why power is big time power. That's the great motivator. Always asking why, why do I want this? What's the benefit in me doing this? What's the impact of me getting this? All those kinds of things. So I talked about a top 10 reasons list. So that may be one way you could do this. You know, the way I currently run my goals is I kind of have almost like a purpose document. And in my purpose document, what it has is it has all the areas that are important to me, my primary areas of my life. So it's got my family life. It's got a general statement about life. And then I've got my family life in there. I've got my health, mental, physical, and spiritual in there that I talk about. And I have my business. And to me, those are the three areas that matter the most to me. It's my family, it's my health. And again, that composes of mental, physical, and spiritual health. And then my business. And those are the three most important areas in my life. Those are my three top priorities in my life. And so that's my purpose document that I talk about. So I'll share with you a couple of things I have. I'm not going to read my whole purpose. I've got it right here, a copy of it. 
um, right here with me, as you can see, if you're on the video, if not, you can probably hear the paper. And I'm not going to read everything to you, but things I talk about as an example, uh, as an example, when I talk about my family, I talk about my family brings me so much joy. We're a loving, happy, fun, and active family. And then I go on to talk about how we're constantly creating great times together, creating memories and magical moments. And I talk about my relationship with my wife, Tiffany, and how incredible that is, and how I am and how we are in our relationship. And so this purpose document, what it is for me, it's, it's a combination of, I guess, of why, but it's also kind of who do I want to be? What kind of man do I want to be? What kind of leader do I want to be? What kind of husband do I want to be? What kind of father? And, and you could have yours. Or what kind of mother do you want to be? Or, or what kind of you know, spouse do you want to be? Or what kind of business person do you want to be? Whatever it might be, you know, uh, uh, son or daughter components of your life that are super important to you. When I talk about my health, I talk about my health being one of my top priorities and that I'm so grateful for my health. And I'm so grateful for the ever abundant supply of health, wealth, and happiness that's flowing to me all the time. I talk about in there when it comes to my health, how I exercise daily. So I had more life to my years and more years to my life, things like that. When I get to my business, I talk about my business. This is my primary vehicle to serve and inspire. This is where I can make an incredible difference. I can make an incredible impact in people's lives. And I got to tell you, when I read this, I'm fired up. I'm excited to start the day. I'm excited to get into whatever I'm about to get into because this is the reason why I do what I do. This is a reason why I'm willing to work. This is a reason why I'm willing to put in the hours. This is a reason why I'm willing to get outside my comfort zone, do the things that maybe I don't want to do in the moment, but I do want to do for the greater purpose. So that purpose part is a big component. Then I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because episode number one of our show is all about this. And that's that idea of vision. And you can go back. If you haven't listened to it, go to episode number one. It's all on clarity. It's all on your vision. And I would encourage you to go back and listen to that and really focus on that stuff. I will say really quickly, again, I'm not going to spend much time on this because there's a whole episode uh, devoted to this, but I work from a vision typically of three years out and it's included all the important areas of my life listed in a vision letter as if it's already all happened. So I've got my pur purpose document, I've got my vision statement, and then I go to the next step. And to me, the next step is really starting to work with now specific goals for this year. So again, this is 2020 at the time of this recording. So I have specific goals in the areas that are important to me for 2021. And I've got them listed out. And I begin kind of point form. I'll put a date to them when I expect I want to have them by or when I want to create that by. And you may put your reason specifically for that goal. I tie mine back to my purpose statement because all of my goals are generally in alignment with who I want to be in the grand scheme of things in the big picture of life. But let's talk specifics. Again, this could tie to the vision. This could tie to your specific goals for the year. You know, you're going to have your business and career goals and whatever that looks like for you. You'll probably have some kind of, for most of us, we have some kind of health goals of what that looks like. Probably most of us, we have some, some kind of family goals that we want to do. Um, you may have growth goals, personal growth goals of how you want to do that. It could be a certain amount of books you want to read or a habit you want to build or a few habits you want to build or seminars you want to attend or a coach you want to invest in, whatever it might be. Your spiritual life will be another area that you could have specific goals for. And, and again, that's different for everybody. And if that's not important to you, that's not important to you. It's any of the things we talk about. Don't feel like, oh, I, I need to have all these areas. No, you need to pick the ones that matter to you. That's what's important about this. If you're setting goals because somebody said you should, and you're setting goals in an area that somebody said you should, and you really have no desire for that, you're wasting your time. You're never going to go and accomplish that, very unlikely anyways, because it's not your goal. It's somebody else's. So one of the elements, one of the components to proper goal setting is making sure that when I'm setting this goal, I'm setting this goal because I want it. That's the prerequisite. It's not if somebody else wants it. It's not if somebody else thinks it's good or bad, a good idea, a bad idea. You know, would they want me to, would they not want me to? That does not matter. This is your life you're living. It's your life. It's not your mom's. It's not your dad's. It's not your spouse. It's, it's not your friend's. It's your life. And I think so many people, unfortunately, don't live their lives the way that they want to because they're always trying to live through the lens of what somebody else thinks you should have or want. And maybe that's you at the time of this. You're, you're listening to this right now thinking, wait a minute, I'm in a career that I actually didn't really decide. My parents wanted me to do this. Well, maybe you ended up doing that and it wasn't even your choosing. Or maybe it's something else, you know, it's society tells you, you should look like this or have a body like this, or you should want this with your life. Your goals are your goals. So make sure you're taking the time to get super clear 
on your goals. I think that's one of the most important things you could do. So your spiritual life, again, that might be something like meditation. It could be going, you know, maybe attending a church service at a certain amount. Uh, it could be daily prayer. It could be, you know, a way that you want to contribute. I mean, there's so many different ways that we could do this. It could be books that you want to read in that arena. It's up to you. Your financial life. Let's talk a bit about that. When we start to set goals for our financial life, you know, things like what kind of income do you want to generate? What kind of net worth? What kind of savings do you want to put away? Maybe it's a certain amount of debt that you'd like to have cleared off. Things like that. I mean, there's so many different ways we can look at this financially. You want to create another income stream beyond just your primary income stream, or you want to create multiple ones this year. I mean, that could be a really good one. You know, when we talked about health earlier, I mean, specific weight that you want to be at, it could be, um, you know, a, a certain exercise, a certain uh, body fat percentage or a certain amount of, I just, the way that you feel, although that's, although that's somewhat intangible, it's tangible too. I mean, as you write that down, it's hard to measure that per se, but you know that you could feel better. I mean, the certain amount of energy, you want to wake up feeling terrific. I mean, that could be a great goal of just full of energy, feeling vibrant. I think another great area is just fun and adventure. And for my wife and I, a lot of that, what that boils down to is travel, different trips that we want to take, different places we want to go, experiences we want to create, you know, how often we want to be doing that, things like that. So as I was writing down some of my goals, I mean, one of my goals for the year is to, is to go and, you know, hopefully we can travel at that point. Right now, there's not a lot of travel going on at the time of this, but assuming there is, is to go somewhere where we could do that for a month. We could go, you know, rent a place for a month and, and kind of go and live there for a month and see what that would be like. I mean, that's something that we want to do. On, and then personal, just personal goals, things that you want just because you want them. These are fun. And I think sometimes when we set goals, we forget about this stuff. I mean, sometimes when you're new to this, when I was young and I got into goal setting, I mean, I was single, I was young in, in the financial industry and, you know, money motivated and ambitious. And I mean, a lot of my goals were just personal goals. I wanted a car, I wanted a suit, I wanted this material goals only. And there's nothing wrong with those goals. Excuse me, I still have goals like that, things I want to accomplish, things I want to purchase and acquire. There's nothing wrong with goals like that. I think that if they're your only goals, you're probably going to have maybe a challenge in getting the, the motivation or motivation is not the right word, getting the inspiration you need. Because often if it's just materialistic goals, there's not necessarily those higher drives that pull us to achievement in those. But that being said, personal goals are important ones. If you want to get a new custom suit, man, put that down. And that's something that you want, put it down. There's no reason to feel bad about that. There's a car you've always wanted. I would focus on that. Go and get it. You know, right now for us, there's, there's kind of three anyways that I wrote down for my personal goals that I'm really focused. They're, they're material type things that I want to get. But number one is an infrared sauna, which I'm in the process of doing. I actually just sent the deposit today and, um, and not just any one. There's a certain one that I want to get and did a bunch of research into which are the best ones, but an infrared sauna. Anyone that knows me that's listening to this knows I'm, I'm all about uh, spas. I love a good spa. When we go to a nice hotel, different place in the world, I always want to check out what they got in terms of their spa setup. What's their hot tub like? And, you know, do they got a cold pool and the steam room, all that kind of stuff. And, and that's my dream. When we build our dream, dream home, I want to build a custom personalized spa, almost facility there where it's got a cold pool, saltwater hot tub, infrared sauna, steam steam room, steam shower, a separate room for massage, just our own personal spa there. So that's part of my vision. However, you know, the home that we're in, it's not big enough to build all of that in there yet, but I can build components of it. So we're buying the infrared sauna uh, right now. We're crossing that one off the list. You know, one of our goals this year is we want to invest in a saltwater hot tub would be one of them. And then I'm looking at buying a cold pool, a cold plunge pool as well, because I'm into that too. So, so those are some, you know, material goals that I want that I'm going to accomplish this year. And I'm setting those out to do that. And that just gives you an idea of different things. And the personal growth area, it could be, again, certain amount of books that you want to read, certain amount of seminars you want to go to, your family. It could be meaningful vacation that you take. It could be a certain amount of time. It could be dedicated time. Something I'm working on right now is when I go, because I, I work from home right now, a lot of the work that I do. And when I go upstairs, just part of my family time is leaving my phone downstairs. Our cell phones are so freaking addictive. It's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy to be not present with our family. And so something I'm working on, part of one of my own goals is just being more present with my wife and kids. When I'm with them, my goal is to be with them. And I'm not perfect at it. It's something I'm still working at. You know, I, I, I'll find myself at low. I want to do that. My habit is to still bring it up. And so what I'm really focused on is leaving it down. When I go up, I leave it down. If I've been out for a bit, you know, to go and put the phone downstairs and then come up and spend time 
with my wife and kids. So you're going to make this big list of all of these goals. And once you've done that, once you've gone and made this list, of all these goals, you'll probably have several. I mean, you'll probably have more than several. I mean, you might have 20, maybe even 30 goals for the year. Here's what I learned. If you try and focus on all of them, you'll probably get none of them done or very few of them. So we want to narrow it down to the most important ones. So if you've got a big list, let's say you've got 20, 25, 30 goals for you, even 15. My first tip to you is narrow it down to your top 10. What are the top 10 goals out of all of those? What are the top 10 goals that you want to accomplish? Once you've got that list, you've narrowed it down to your top three, or pardon me, the next step is to narrow it down to your top three, is really start to bring that back and think, okay, of all of these 10 goals, what are the top three? And I'll give you some tips on this stuff in terms of what I would recommend on how you could go and do that. So say I've got my top 10. And I'm not quite sure what the top three were. Generally, what I ask myself is a real simple question. Which of these goals would help me achieve a lot of the other goals? Because usually what happens is there's usually a few, one or two or three goals that I know if I went and hit this one, if I got that promotion, if I made this certain amount of money, if I, you know, wh whatever it might be, I mean, a certain goal, if I, was to get, if I was to get in this kind of shape, then I would be able to access this, whatever it might be. Find out which of those goals can help you achieve most of the other goals. And then the other question you could ask is out of all of these 10, which are in most alignment with my long-term vision? Because if we're operating from that, what's in alignment with the long-term vision of who I want to be, my best self, working on my pursuit, well, we know we're going in the right area. So narrow it down to the top 10 and then narrowing it down to the top three for the year. Last piece of the puzzle for me, the, the way that I like to work from, uh, I'm going to recommend a great resource and a great book called The 12-Week Year. It's a wonderful book. It's probably the best book I think I've ever read. And I've read a lot of them, but I think it's the best book I've ever read on an execution system for putting something in place to achieve your goals. Because maybe this is not the first time you've set goals. Maybe you've set goals many times, but usually where we fall short is in execution. It's in the action of putting that to that. So I'd recommend, again, the book, The 12 Week, 12 week Year by Brian Moran. And I believe Michael Lennington, I believe, is the, the co-author to that as well, too. Great resource. So once we've done that, you can then break down your goal. If you've got your yearly goals, just break it into that first 12 weeks. So you could think of it the first quarter if you want. He talks about it differently in that book, but, but let's talk about that for, for right now. The first quarter of the first 12 weeks. Well, if we work with the first 12 weeks in a bonus week of week 13 in that quarter, we can now start to narrow our focus. Here's generally what happens. When we set one-year goals, often what happens is this. We'll set a one-year goal. We know we've got time to do it. And so we don't really focus that much. The first month, not that big a deal if I don't do what I need to do. I've still got 11 months to achieve my goal. The second month, you know, not that big of a deal. I still got 10 months to go and achieve my goal. You know, the third month, not that big. I still got time. And so we're always thinking out of the illusion that I have lots of time. And the second illusion is that somehow magically everything is going to come together <laughs> near the end of the year. We can control a lot more when we work with a shorter time frame. So we're setting those goals. Then we're narrowing it down to that first 12 weeks, that first three months. And what I recommend, and again, I learned this all from the 12-week year. I owe them a lot to helping me with this. It's been a wonderful process. Is this idea of then getting super clear on two to three focused goals for that 12 weeks. Dialed in. Two to three. I wouldn't recommend a lot more than that. Maybe you even have one for the first time you're doing this, one major goal that you focus at. Again, that you know these are in alignment with the bigger picture of the one-year goals of the vision. So what could that look like? If you've got a major health and fitness goal, it might be a certain weight you want to have, uh, could be a certain body fat, whatever it might be. That's fine. Whatever that is, that's great. If you're, It could be a certain amount of income that you want to make in this first 12 weeks. You run a business, certain amount of sales that you want to have. You're in a recruiting business, certain amount of recruits that you want to have. Um, it could be, you know, you've got a, a, a deadline, you want to write a book and there's a deadline you want to write a X amount by half the book or the whole book by this time. I mean, it could be that there's so many different things, but focused goals in that 12 weeks. And then with every goal, so you've got one, two, three focused goals that you're going to work on. And then with every goal, what you want to then work on is two to four action items or strategies or tactics, two to four very specific concrete action items that you will be taking and you can take weekly, daily towards that goal. So as an example, you got a certain amount of sales you want to make in your job and business, whatever it might be. And it could be a certain amount of prospecting calls that you could do. It's a certain weight you want to weigh and it's a certain amount of 
you know, weight training you're going to do that week or cardio or yoga or getting out for walks, 10,000 steps a day, whatever it might be. You know, it could be uh, your diet for that certain amount of, you know, food intake that you want to have. I mean, there's so many different things, right? So many different things, but different strategies, specific strategies you can use, certain amount of calls that you want to make, uh, talking to people in your team if you're in more of a leadership type role. There's lots of things we can do. Clear, specific tactics, actions, strategies that are going to move you towards your goal. So with all of that being said, I think that if you begin with a purpose statement, you've then got a clear vision like we talked about for three years, maybe even longer into the future. Then you've broken down to your goals for this coming year, the next 12 months. And then you make a plan uh, for the net. You narrow that down, by the way, to your top three most important goals. And then you make a plan for the first 12 weeks, that first quarter of the year of your new year that you're starting, where you're going to dial in your focus, specific goals, specific actions, item, specific strategies. You now have a very comprehensive and very solid plan on how you're going to go and achieve it. And you might be listening to this and think, wow, that's, I mean, that sounds like a lot of work. And I guess it is. I mean, it's certainly, there's no doubt that it is, but let me ask you this. So what's more work? right? Going through life, not getting what you want or investing the time up front so that you're super crystal clear and you're putting the odds in your favor. You're putting all the odds in your favor. You're stacking as much as you can that you can get even closer to what you want. Which one's more work? I mean, to me, I want to create the life that I want to create. And so I know that takes time. I know that takes energy. I know that takes time to think and really focus on this stuff. And most of us, we have the habit of just continuing to do what we've always done continuing to do what we've always done. And if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always got. And so if we want to change what, we, what we're getting, we've got to change what we're doing. So this may seem like a lot to you, and maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, compared to what? Um, however, this is the kind of stuff that can really help you. This is the kind of stuff that can really dial in your mindset, can really dial in your focus. And by the way, the last tip I'm going to give you as we come to a close of this episode, the last tip I want to give you is this. When you've got all this, you may not have time or may not dedicate the time to read all of this stuff to yourself every single day. I don't read all of this to myself every single day. What I focus on, what works well for me is my purpose statement, my reasons, my why. I focus on that stuff. So I read that daily. I focus on my quarterly, my 12-week goals, if you'll call it that. And I focus on Dowden on that. Those are things that I'm focused on. And then my, you know, my plan is to read that vision once a week, you know, work on different things, work on maybe some bucket list item goals, stuff like that, and give myself the time to dedicate that to, you know, weekly. Sometimes I'll read my vision letter daily. You know, I know I talked about that, how, you know, four or five years ago, I focused on that. And so this is an evolving process for me of finding what works best. Sometimes what worked before is something I'm going to shift to a little bit differently at this season of my life. You have to find what works for you. Here's what I would recommend. Whatever you do, Focus on making sure that you're taking time to see it in your mind, to feel it and believe it. Just like episode one, we talked about SFB, see, feel, and believe. So when you've got these clear goals, whether you're going to focus on your 12-week ones, your one year, your long term, I don't care. You got to pick something you're going to focus on. Make sure you're taking the time to see it, feel it, and believe it. And as you keep doing this and you keep taking action every day, you keep working towards it, you keep taking the steps, you're going to get off course and you get back on course, you know, you fall off, you will start to move towards your goals. And when you start to move towards your goals, your goals start to move towards you. So I want you to know something. I believe in you. Whatever stage that you're at, I know you can do this. You deep down, you know, you can do this. That's why it's even, that's why it keeps coming back to you and you keep thinking about it is because you know that you can. There's something more inside of you that you haven't given yet. So let's bring that out. Let's go and create an incredible year together in wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, whatever you're focused on. I mean, how wonderful would it be if all of us got more dialed in than we've ever been in, got more clarity than we've ever had, and we focused on creating a better world for us, our families, our communities. Hey, the whole world would get better. Thank you for being with us today on this episode of The Pursuit. We appreciate you so much. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate you more than my words can express. As always, hey, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do at Ben Spangle, B-E-N-S-P-A-N-G-L. Would love to connect with you on there. You know, here's some ideas from you, all those kinds of things. Make sure you subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're on. Rank it, review it. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. And whenever you're hearing this, 
If this is new information to you, or if this is something you've drifted on, if you're a little bit stuck, maybe you're halfway through the year and you're stuck, go back, revisit this, go through this process. You'll be so glad that you did. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you soon.